All right, what we're going to be talking about is we're going to be talking about accuracy, precision, and percent error. And the main thing that we're going to be looking at today is we're going to be talking about that percent error and why it's important and how it's calculated. Because percent error is going to be what specifically you're going to be graded on when it comes to labs and lab situations. First thing is accuracy. Accuracy is going to be your closeness to an accepted or a literature value. For example, gravity has a value of 9.81 meters per second squared. So if you do a pendulum lab for me, how close did you get to that 9.81? Uh, you do a different uh, lab, say you do a water drop lab. How close did you get, again, to that 9.81? One of the labs that you'll be doing for me is you'll be finding the density of copper. Uh, copper has a density of 8.96. Again, if you do a couple different trials, how close are you to that 8.96? Precision, on the other hand, is how close your trials are to one another. Precision has nothing to do with accuracy. What I like to call precision is duplicated results. For example, let's say you do three trials. How close is trial one to trial two? How close is trial three to trials one and two? So again, this is duplicated results. Let's go ahead and look at uh, three sample students. Okay. Uh, group number one, uh, 9.34, 12.76, and 5.76. And again, we're going to talk about that literature value being 9.81. 9.34, that's kind of close to that 9.81. But again, if I look completely across the board okay, at the whole set of data, I'm going to come out and say, you know what, I really don't think group one is very accurate. They're too far away from 9.81. If you look at their results and how close they are to one another, uh, again, we go from 9 to 12 to 5. Again, their numbers are all over the place. So I would say group number one is not accurate, and they are also not precise. Group number two, 5.78, 5.93, and 5.74. Again, if you compare it to that 9.81, they're a long ways away. But if you compare the individual trials to one another, 5.78, 5.93, and 5.74, those are close to one another. So what I'd have to say is I would have to say they are not accurate, but their precision is good. And then if we look at group three, 9.78, 10.51, and 9.95, again, those results, I would say that they're pretty close to that 9.81 overall. Okay, So I would say group three is probably accurate. If you look at their precision, again, I would say that those results are close to one another. So group one, not accurate, not precise. Group two, not accurate, but they are precise. Group three, uh, they are both accurate and precise. Now, percent error, percent error is just going to be a way of expressing how far off you are from a literature value. Again, some of you may have been looking at that 10.51, and when I said, hey, I'm going to say that they are accurate, some of you may have looked at that and said, you know, I don't know uh, if that's close enough for me. And again, if it's not close enough for you, you know, someone else on the other hand might say, hey, I think it's pretty close. Well, the thing is, who's right when you're saying it's close or it's not close? See, those are qualitative measures. Those are those things that, argue, that are argumentative. Okay. Again, it's someone's opinion. And again, that's where science has a problem is, is with opinions being correct. To make something better or better data, it's important to have a quantitative measure. And that's what percent error does. It allows you to take a number or a measure and express it numerically. To do this, uh, basically what I say is you are accurate if you are within 10%. What I'm saying is I'm going to give you a 10% error. That first 10% is going to be free. See, the thing is, there's human error involved. There's impurities in the chemicals. So that's why I give you that first 10% free. Let's say a group uh, has a 17% error. And with that 17%, again, I give them the first 10% free. Well, after that, what I start doing is I start taking a point off for every 5%. So from 10 to 15%, a point's taken off. Okay, I said they were 17, so they're going to fall in that 15 to 20 range. And in that 15 to 20 range, uh, what it is is they're going to get their second point taken off. Now, at any point, if you're not happy with your percent error, uh, and you want to redo a lab, feel free to come in on your own time as long as it is before uh, it is due. Feel free to come in uh, and repeat a lab. So what is percent error? Percent error is just going to be calculated by taking your value 
and subtracting away that literature value. Notice that's in parentheses, so you got to do that step first. Then what we'll do is we'll divide it by that accepted value and then multiply by 100. So let's look at that 10.51. Looking at this, what we'll do is we'll take your value, 10.51, and we'll subtract away that accepted value, 9.81, and get an answer. Then what we'll do is we'll divide it by the literature value, 9.81, and multiply by 100. Well, let's look again at the sig fig part of this because, again, now that you know sig fig rules, you have to follow everything according to sig figs. All of your quizzes, all of your tests, all of your homework, all of your labs, everything is now going to have to be in correct sig fig form. If it's not in correct sig fig form, I'm going to take a point off. So let's just follow this one through. Okay, first thing, we're going to take 10.51, and it says we're going to subtract away 9.81. Now when you plug this into your calculator, all your calculator is going to do is give you 0.7. Okay? But when I look at this, my last complete column is in the hundredths position. And to show that I have the hundredths position needing to be significant, I need to draw that zero in there. So what you'll do now is you'll take 0 0.70. We're going to divide it by 9.81 and then we're going to multiply that answer by 100. Okay, let's look at sig figs. 0 0.70 has two sig figs. 9.81 has three sig figs. Now, if I need to take a decimal and convert it to percent form, I multiply by 100. It's a definite 100. And if it's a definite number that we're going to be multiplying by, that has infinite sig figs. Remember your rules uh, for multiplication and division. It is the least number of sig figs. So I have two sig figs, three sig figs, and infinite sig figs. And because of that, my least number is going to be two sig figs. Well, when I plug it into my calculator, my calculator is going to spit out 7.1355759. You told me, or I said that the least number is going to be uh, two significant figures, and with it being two significant figures, I'm going to round to that position there. So my final answer is going to be 7.1 percent. Percent errors are going to be expressed as a percentage of how far off you are from where you should be. So again, using correct sig figs, 7.1 percent. Percent errors, they can be both positive and negative. Now, the thing is, when you read through your book, your book is going to say, ignore the negatives. It's going to say, take the absolute value when you subtract your value from the literature value. Okay? They're going to say, take the absolute value. I say, I don't want that. I want to know the positives and the negatives. Here's the reason why. If you would ever get a negative percent error, and I see that negative percent error, what that's telling me is, your answer is lower than what the accepted value is. Now, if you look at our answer, that 7.1, that's a positive 7.1. What that's telling me is we are higher than the accepted value. And 10.51 is higher uh, than the 9.81. So again, I want to see the positives and the negatives. Please do not ignore them.